belong to God. The Bible says what? This is part of our covenant. His strength is made perfect in our weakness of all things. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. What a God. He stacks the whole deck of cards in our favor. No matter what, in spite of us, he stacks the deck of cards in our favor. So when you know that you've got promises from God, you've read that Bible, you know the things that it says about what God has for you. You claim it, you keep it, you believe it, and you will receive it. What you don't believe, what you don't receive. I know you guys have heard the story a million times about how I spent 12 days in ICU, but all the time they were telling me, you have congestive heart failure. I have, well, that's one thing I was very careful. I never told anybody that I have congestive heart failure because in my mind, I don't. I don't have it. It was a setback. It was a, a pimple, a bump in the road, a crack in the cement, right? But it wasn't mine to own. No, I do not have congestive heart failure. And after a while, even my heart doctor said it. It doesn't look like you have congestive heart failure anymore after the ultrasound we did. So I know I'm still healing, but I also know I'm healed. It's just a matter of time and me cooperating with what God has begun in my life. So I am going in and possessing this part of my land. Now, like he said, you don't take it all at once. You get it step by step, mile by mile, foot by foot. But the bottom line is you keep taking it. You keep taking every bit you see, you take it. You see something else you need to possess, you get a hold of that. Get a handle on it. You work it until it's perfectly God's way, which will never be perfectly, but you aim for perfection. You shoot for perfection. In spite of yourself, you shoot for it. There are times when I just want to sit down and eat a pint of ice cream. But instead of doing it a couple of times a week or a couple of times a month, now we're down to maybe a couple of times in a four-month period, maybe even a five-month period. But the bottom line is I am cooperating with God with what God showed me to help my body heal. Now, when I get down another 20 pounds, I'm hoping by then I'll be able to run up the stairs. That's what I'm hoping. But I am feeling the difference because I'm working with God. Now, I want to share this with you. A lot of you out there in YouTube land are claiming the Lord is your Lord and Savior. You read the word, you love God, you love his ways, you're trying to live a holy life, but you have an issue with your health. Now I'm gonna tell you this. These are some of the ways we allow, that word allow, the devil to displace your health is by eating all the things you know cause problems in your body all the time. Now we all cheat, but I'm talking on a daily routine. It's your daily practice. Can't go a day without some sweets. Can't go a day without some junk food, some fries, some burgers, some, some uh, Krispy Kreme donuts, some hallelujah soda, some what you call it, uh, candy bars, some dumbfounded alcohol, whatever. I'm just making it silly. But we oftentimes don't just cheat. You know, we'll say, oh, I only had a bag of chips maybe twice this month. But the other days that you didn't have the chips, you may have had ice cream. Another day you may have had cake. Another day you may have had cookies. Another day you may have had some, you may have even smoked some weed. 
And that gives you the munchies too now, doesn't it? Mm. So you may eat instead of a couple of cups of popcorn, you may have eaten a gallon of popcorn with a gallon of butter all over it and a gallon of salt sprinkled over it. See, we don't pay attention to the things we do. And the reason I know this, now let's talk about me. When I was in my 30s and I started eating healthy, I really, really thought I was doing good. Oh, you guys, oh, I was eating salads and I was eating vegetables. I was doing so well. But what the Lord showed me now in hindsight, you know how they say hindsight's 2020, talking about going in and possessing every part of your life is during those times that I was doing that, I was also eating ice cream, drinking shakes, eating fast foods. And I was thinking I was doing good with the fast foods. When I came out the hospital and my friend drove me through Jack in the Box and I took a bite of an egg roll that I had not had in a matter of maybe three years. I took a bite of the egg roll. I couldn't finish it. I couldn't touch it. It was like, it was like eating pure salt. I couldn't believe I... Egg rolls. I mean, come on, Jack in the Box egg rolls are jamming, y'all. I love them. But they're too salty for me now. I couldn't handle it. And it's because I have cut down so far from where I was in my 30s that I can't handle the salt I used to eat when I was in my 30s, thinking I was doing so well. So some of you, you think you're doing great, but you really need to consult with God now. Don't go another 20 or 30 years like I did trying to find my way. It took the emergency, the, the ICU, for God to open my eyes to all that I was still doing wrong. He knew I was doing right in my heart. He knew my, my motive was right. So he gave me mercy and time. And the trip to the hospital and ICU was God's blessing of time so that I would become acquainted with what I was doing wrong unintentionally. And I could make adjustments based on knowledge he was giving me in the hospital. Information. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Okay. While you're getting understanding, get wisdom, get it all, get all you can. Because everything you get will help you navigate through as you possess your land, as you take control of your life, as you take control of your health, as you seize those blessings that God has already promised you. Do you hear me? The, the uh, violent, how does it go? The kingdom suffers violence but, and the violence take it by force. You take yours by force. That's what God is teaching in the Old Testament. Everything he's promised us, we are to take by force. You can't sit down casually and wait for the devil to come and deliver it to you. Right. Tain't going to happen, baby. No. You have to go in and possess your land. It's your land is promised to you. You go in and possess it. That means you drive out the hatred. You drive out the jealousy. You drive out the, the stinking thinking. You drive out the enemy. You drive out his lies. You drive out his predictions for your life. He, You drive out all of those fears you have of failure in any area in your life you have fears in. You drive out your thinking of poverty. You drive out your expectation for little. You drive out your fears of the worst always happening to you. You drive all that crap out. Because it's not yours. That belongs to the devil. God's promises are yea and amen. And they're all for you and me. All the good. All the good. Nothing bad. What does the Bible say? Think on these things. Virtue. Goodness. Blessings. Think on these things. Not on his crap. Not on his mess. He'll always make you uh, look lower. He'll always make you uh, hang your head low in despair. Despair of what? You ain't got nothing to be afraid of. You got God's promises. 
God is not a man that he should lie. So when the enemy comes in one direction, you spit in his eye and kick him back another direction. Tell him never to return. You take authority. You don't let him bully you. You're a child of the Most High King. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Oh, come on. You're God's people. You can't get any better than that. Think like a God child. Think like a king's daughter, a king's son. Don't think like a pauper out in the street. I don't care what your human father was or was not. You got a heavenly father. And I do believe this is the season. I do believe it and I speak it over all of our people in God's church of love. All of our people, even those from other countries, God's church of love. And I speak it over all of you believers who are true to God. True to God, not half-stepping, true to God. Not perfect, but true. This is the season for us to be blessed right in through here. This is the season for things to come to us easy. We speak it, we pray it, we think it, it comes. It happens, it happens, it happens. Answered prayer left and right, easy, easy, easy. Sometimes God gives you a nice blessing, a nice retrieve before hardship is coming. He gives you a little time to enjoy moments of pleasure. Take advantage of it now. Whatever things you think you may need, grab them now. And while you're grabbing, equip yourself in the spirit realm. Put on all, the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the enemy. Now, as you are equipping yourself, as you are drawing close to God's bosom, as you are building yourself, building up yourself in the most holy faith, you get that word in you and renew your mind and you do everything it takes to remove everything out of your life, even people who are bad influences on you. You know who some of those people are. You got some relatives, hey, just cause they're family don't mean you got a hand. And I'm not trying to be cold. What I'm saying is there are some things you don't tolerate in your life. There are some people you don't tolerate in your life. You know who they are. You know who they are. You know the people that always criticize you, always got something negative to say about you. You try to do this and, and they poo-poo it. Oh, you ain't going to get there. I don't know what you're thinking. You must be in fantasy land. Get back down to reality. You know you ain't going to get that. Who who you think you are? But not who I think I am. It's who God says I am. Because who God says I am is way more than who I think I am. So I don't go by what I think. I go by what he says. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am the head, not the tail. Hello. Mm, he loves me with an everlasting love. The Lord is the lifter up of my head. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. By his stripes, I am healed. For God is for me, not against me. No weapon formed against me will prosper. God's favor is on me. Ah, oh. you can go on and on. That's why you got to get the word in you. When the stinking thinking tries to creep in like it did with him, you start quoting that word, swatting the flies right on out your face. Get back out this house. You don't belong here. The same way you swat those thoughts and those flies out your life, you keep those negative people out of your life too. Those people that tell you, you know, you really think you something, but you ain't never going to be nothing. You ain't never going to be nobody. You ain't nothing. You never going to be nothing. Don't think you all that in a bag of chips. You ain't worth diddly squat. God ain't thinking about you. Nah, 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 nah. 
Those kind of people, baby, you keep as far from you as the East. My mother used to say, handle people like that with a long handled spoon. I call it, keep them as far away from you as the East is from the West. Just, hey, they call, hey, how you doing? Bye, I gotta go. I mean, keep it short. Don't encourage it, nothing. But the ones that you know are right with God, you stay up and up close and personal with them because the two of you will constantly bless each other, correct each other, counsel each other, pray for each other, encourage each other. But all them naysayers, no, no, you're not obligated to hang with them. I don't care if it's your mama or your pappy. I'm serious. You don't realize the negative effects that people have over your life when they're speaking curse, curses into your life. You got people in your family to tell you the F word, F you, why don't you go to hell and all that stuff? Guess what? You're not obligated to hang with them. Under your breath, you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, back to sender. That's it, just like the mail, back to sender. Here, mailman, that's not mine. <laughs> mm -hmm. so basically that's what you do with your life you see it as your inheritance from God you accept the blessings and you spit out the curses spit it right in Satan's eye spit him in his eye just spit him in his eye kick him in the ball give him the finger Tell them where to go. Whoops upside the head. I said, whoops upside the head in the name of Jesus. Whoops upside the head. I said, whoops upside the head in the name of Jesus. Black eye. Yeah. Broken jaw. You don't know how to punch, but Jesus' name sure does. And you let him have it. You let him have it. See, that's one, that's one turkey you can be real mean and vengeful with. But when it comes to people, vengeance is God's. He will repay. Every one of your enemies that you think have gotten over on you, baby cakes, trust me. God has a check for them that they will never be able to cash. Trust me, it's going to blow up in their face. And you are not to celebrate it. But just know that God's got your enemy. He's got that. He's got your back. And he'll handle your enemies. So you don't have to be intimidated by one stinking soul. You don't have to be intimidated by one stinking demon. You don't have to be intimidated by a thousand demons. No, you don't have to be intimidated. Because greater is God that's in you than he that's in the world. Don't let no, no little slimy little demon try to knock you off your inheritance. No. No, nah, no, nah. even God said even at your enemies, you will laugh. He even said at your enemies, I will laugh. Talking about God will laugh at them himself. They're like, you must be jiving. <laughs> Whatever. So just know that God is for you. God is on your side. He is with you. He is in you. He is moving on your behalf. He's faithful, you guys. He loves you with an everlasting love. Don't go for the lies. Don't go for the okie doke. Please don't. When Satan tries to remind you of your failures, you remind him, remind him of his destiny. Yeah, buddy. Because see, your failures are under the blood of Jesus. That's right. You're under the blood. Thank God for his love, his understanding, his patience, long-suffering, and mercy. But Satan, he doesn't have any of that. I remember Mariel said that. Remember in one of those times when she shared on the video? She said, uh, let me see if I can quote her right. I'm, it might be a loose quote, but she said, you know, we have this, we have God's blessings, we have his mercy, we have blah, 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 blah. And I told Satan, you don't get to have any of that. That none of that is yours. You know, that's not yours. That's mine. That's not yours. You don't get 
<laughs> the way she said it was like, you don't get to have his mercy. You don't get to enjoy his love. You don't get to enjoy anything from God. That's all ours, but not yours. You're out of that number. So don't even try it. You know, it, it, it's, we have to remember whose we are and who we are in Christ. We have to remember that, you guys. We are not the tail. Remember the little demonic uh, video I did where I said um, I was acting like the demon and I said it was a dramatization for those of you who don't know. But anyway, and at one point I said, uh, speaking as the demon, this is the demon mindset. I'll be the head and you'll be my tail and I'll wag you because I'll be the head and you'll be my tail. Right, right, okay. No, what does the word say? What did I put at the end of the video? The word of God says, we are the head. We are not the tail. Don't ever allow Satan, his lies, his threats, his intimidation, his bumps in the night, his boogeymen don't allow any of his lies or his tricks to make you think you're not worthy of what God has. Number one, newsflash, none of us are worthy. But in Christ, under the blood of Jesus Christ, we are worthy because of who Christ is, not because of who we are. We are worthy because of whose we are, who we belong to. So we can expect the best from God, knowing good and well he'll never get our best. No matter how hard we try, we'll still get his best. Because that's the kind of God he is. So don't go for the devil's okie doke Don't go for those lies. They're lies from the pit. What did God tell Peter? I pray. I've been praying for you, Peter, because Satan would like to sift you as wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith fail not. And I pray for all of you guys in the name of Jesus, including me, that our faith fails not. No matter what comes, no matter where we fall, no matter how we fail, no matter where we fall short. Faith fail not. No, have faith in God. Don't look at yourself. Have your faith in God. God will bless you in spite of you. God will keep you from falling. Your inheritance has your name on it. When God promised me six years ago that he would bless me, that he would choose my inheritance for me from that same verse that he talked about. He led me to that, to, to Psalms 47. I'm reading and I saw that and I was like, okay, Lord, choose my inheritance. You know my taste, you know what I like. You know what I, don't, I don't like small, I like room, I like space. And if it's not something that I think I like when I look at it, I want to be able to make it something that I like when I get to working at it. And you know what that is, where it is, and all of that. Good quality, no problems, nice neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And that's where I am right now. I would never have thought to come here. All I knew was Pasadena and Altadena. I wouldn't have come here. For what? Had no idea God had a physical inheritance as well. See, when God says our inheritance, it not only includes like a piece of land and place to live, and it not only includes our blessings and the Savior. It's all of it. It's all inclusive. Everything he has for us involves every promise, every blessing, everything he's given us, all power, everything, all authority, Mm. favor with God and man. Blessing. See, some of us think we have to have loads of money to be blessed. 
If you have favor, baby, you don't even need the money because people will do things for you at no cost just because God told them to do it. Somebody may walk up to you and say, God told me to give you this car. Somebody may walk up to you and say, God told me to bless you with this building so you can start your church. Bless you with this, this location or this plot of land so you can do whatever, whatever the case may be. God told me to bless you with this uh, $10,000, 15, 20,000, whatever. God told me to leave you my, my will. I don't have any kids. He told me to leave you everything I got. Give it to you. They may not know anything about you but your name, but maybe they saw you on YouTube or they saw you at the grocery store and you stopped and prayed for them and they got your name and number and never forgot you. You never know how God can bless you. You never know. But whatever it is, what God has for you is for you. Let me tell you this, because I want you to wait and see what happens. Every time in my life, the Lord gave me, this is kind of a weird, it's not even a sermon, it's more of a talk. But anyway, every time the Lord gave me a dream, one thing I've noticed if I dream about a car, I'm sorry, I'm going horse, y'all. <laughs> I rebuke the hoarseness in Jesus' name because I got to sing tomorrow and praise team. So it'll be gone by tonight. I'll, I'll make sure of that. But anyway, um, every time I have ever dreamt about a car, believe it or not, every single time I got the car, every single time. Now, let's go down through memory lane. Just to give you a quick example, back in the uh, 80s, late 80s, I dreamt that I was in a dealership and this tall, older man, he looked like he's about six foot three, he was walking me around the car. And I remember the look of the car was totally different than the way cars were styled back then. Everything back then looked like a box or a boat. But it, it wasn't like, you know, this car was. And I remember looking at that car thinking, wow, this is just so unique, so pretty. Now, in the dream, the color of the car was bright, bright, bright yellow. And when I woke up, I knew the yellow meant, the color yellow meant it was going to happen. I just just knew that somehow. Okay. Now, in the dream, the man's walking me around and I'm taking in all the details. Curved on the side, groove going down, tapered down toward the front. It was wide. It was a luxury car. And all my life, from day one, I had always had 10-year-old hoopties or older. I never had a new car. Never. And here I am, dreaming this beautiful car and I'm crying as I'm looking thinking God how wow you love me so much to give me something so beautiful I didn't know what kind it was didn't know what brand name God knows me I'm not into brand names I'm not into stuff like that I'm not impressed by glorious things I like pretty but pretty can come from a thrift shop for all I care I just like pretty but I'm not hung up on stuff like that not impressed okay a year later, maybe a year and a half, I had another dream that I'm riding in a bus, a city bus, and there's a man's voice behind me. When the man starts speaking to me, I hear the voice. I never saw him, but I heard the voice say, look out the window at the car lot. I look at the car lot, lot full of cars. One car was all lit up yellow, bright yellow. He said, God's going to bless you with that new car, but first he wants you to buy a used car. Ain't that a trip? Now, when I woke up, I knew the yellow meant I'm going to get the car. I knew the lot meant I had to buy it at a dealership. I never bought from a dealership. I did all my buying from personal you know, you know, buy some little piece of junk somebody sold, they're getting rid of, I'll buy it and try to keep it running for the next three or four years. And that's the way my life was. 
So here I am. I get the call. I'm trying to make a point to you. So please be patient with me. Okay. So sure enough, I finally say, okay, Lord, I want to show you how God has stuff for us. Lord, where should I go to look for this car? And I get Thorson Buick. Thorson Buick. Oh, I went there a long time ago. Them people didn't give me the time of day. Thorson Buick. Okay, okay. I'll go to Thorson Buick. Okay, Lord, as a sign that I'm uh, when, I, when I go to get this used car, as a sign, would you please tell me, make it real plain, I am asking you to tell me a name of a salesman to ask for. And i tell you this, as a sign, if this man is there, the name you give me, if he's there, I'll sit down and sign the papers right on the spot. So I walked in to Thorson Buick one day when the Lord had me finally convinced to do it. I had to battle over that for a while, getting enough faith to do so. I walked in. And I said, is there a Lee here? Because that was the name that the Lord gave me, L-E-E. -E. That's a common name back east, but not out here on the West Coast. So I said, is there a Lee here? And they said, hey, Lee, you got a, a customer. I was like, oh, my God, there's my son. He's here. Okay. So I said, now, Lord, now check it out now. I said, Lord, this is a used dealership, and I know it's not normal to get what you want. But, you know, I want a V8. I want uh, leg space for my husband and booty space for me. <laughs> and I want it to be burgundy on the outside and tan or ivory leather on the inside. And I named a few other items that I wanted for safety's sake. All right. First thing the man does. How you doing? Oh, I'm Patricia. I'm, I'm, Le I'm Leah. Nice to meet you. He said, uh, how did you hear about me? And I said, oh, I, a little birdie told me. I just left it at that. So he walks. He says, well, what are you looking for? And this is all I told him. I said, a V8, leg space for a man six foot three, and width space for me. And he walked me right over the first car he showed me was the Buick Roadmaster burgundy on the outside, tan leather on the inside, all the other specs I asked for, V8, all the other goodies I asked for. It wasn't packed with bells and whistles. It just had the basic necessities, airbags, safety things that I was asking for. Um, knowing my husband and I love music, I asked for certain things, you know, where that was concerned. Anyway, got the car. They okayed the credit. Paid that car off in four years. And then the Lord let me know, I will tell you when it's time to get the new car. And we kept that car for nine years, almost 10. And then the Lord started saying, started hunching me in the spirit. Start test driving, drive around and test a bunch of cars, see how they feel. I was like, okay. Now I'm almost forgetting about the dream. I'm just testing cars all in 2002. Milton and I riding all over the place, riding Volvos and riding Chevrolets and everything we can come up with. We're just riding and riding vans the whole nine yards. Okay. We get to 2000, the end of 2002. And I finally said, Lord, what year? Because I'm thinking it could be 2004, 2005. What year do you want me to go out and buy a new car? What year do you want me to get? And plain as day, I got 2003. I said, okay, here we go with some more specs. And now I got real down and dirty on this. I want a V8, no less than a V6. I want, um, no, I really wanted a V8. But anyway, I want a um, four-door. I always want that. I want pearl lesson. I said, you know them pretty pearl cars on the outside? I want a pearl lesson on the outside. Ivory leather on the inside. I'd like to have a CD player with the cassette and the radio, AM, FM, you know, all the little normal stuff. A whole bunch of airbags. 
I would like to have power window, power mirrors on the outside. So if it's raining, I don't have to wind the window to adjust the mirror. All safety things I'm talking about. All right, that was it. <laughs> we drive about five different dealerships that day and we walk into one and we say, okay, uh, all I want, I tell them all the same thing. V8, uh, I want a um, something long enough for daddy long legs here and something wide enough for big mama. And they laugh and they walk us around. Well, the man came out and said, here's your salesman. I said, okay. Now, this is my second trip to this place. And at this point, the salesman says, he's six foot three. He's an older man. And he says, okay, I'll go get a car for you. I said, okay, thanks. I didn't mention color, didn't mention style, didn't mention model. I didn't mention anything. I just said, I want the biggest car you got, the widest car you got, something that can handle him and me comfortably, and something with a V8 engine. I mean, I just wanted something. With... The reason I like V8s is because when I put my foot on the gas, and I got to avoid an accident. I want to know when I put my foot on the gas, the car says, there, we're done. Not scratching his head, wondering now, now what do I do? No. And then I'm in a crash because I can't escape it. So that's the reason I like powerful engines. We get off in here. Man pulls out. Pearlescent on the outside. Ivory leather on the inside. I mean, I'm telling the Lord, the specs never tell the salesman. And I get it every single time what I ask for. Every single time what I ask for. And it was a luxury car to boot. And then when I got the car home, we got the lowest interest for, for that time for the payments. We got the lowest interest. And the beautiful part was when I got the car home, the Lord showed me what a sense of humor he had. Because he knows I would have I would have bargained down to bargain basement level of that car to get the lowest price payments. And the Lord never allowed me to even ask. Never made it occur to me. I got that car home and my neighbor told me, girl, you know, you got the top of the line. I'm like, no. He said, you got the so-and-so. You got the top of the line. I was like, oh, my goodness. I'm not dealing with the name and all that right now. I'm just dealing with the point. The point is what God has for you is for you. And all my life I spent thinking my lot in life was to get second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth best. I got the best house. I got the best car. I got the best husband. God is, is showering me now with the best. My latter years, he promised me when I was complaining in my former years that my latter years would be greater than my former years. And I'm reaping the benefits now. And I believe this season is for God's people to reap the benefits now while the getting's good. Get it now while the getting's good. Pray for the big stuff now while the big stuff is, is available. Because there'll come a time where it won't be because of where we're at. So get your blessings now. It's okay to be greedy for God's goodness. Just don't be greedy for stuff. You need to be willing to walk away from it all if God says leave it all behind and go to a place I'll lead you to. You ought to be willing to do that. You don't fall in love and marry your stuff. No, you stay married to God. You be willing to leave your stuff if you have to. Stuff ain't that important. That beautiful car I had when it when it died and I didn't have the money to take care of it and and uh, it was a bunch of hassle with parking and everything else. I the Lord laid it on my heart, just go on and sell it. So I had to do without a car for a while. And then someone gave me a 20-year-old car. And it's a hoopty, but it runs. And I praise God for it. And I never shed one tear off of that other car that I had to get rid of. And here's the dream that God gave me, the last dream, the last car dream. I dreamt I woke up, I had fallen asleep and I woke up and looked around and I said, oh my goodness, God gave me my car back again. That car that I love so much, but not that car because the license plate was different. It's a different car. It's a newer car in mint condition, brand new condition. 
And God's going to bless me with it. And I know he's going to bless me with it. And I said in the dream, he gave it to me. I didn't say I had to go buy it. So I don't know where I'm going to get the car. But I'm declaring and decreeing by faith so you guys can witness this and I can show you when it happens. He gave me that dream a year and a half ago. Woke up crying. It touched me so deeply. And in the dream, I was telling everybody, look, look, God gave me back my so-and-so. Look, God gave me back brand new. And this is a newer one. And it's in mint condition. Same car, same pearlescent on the outside, same light leather on the inside, everything the same, just everything in pristine shape. So when I get that car, I will take a picture and I'll let you guys see. God fulfills his promises. Every car I've ever dreamt about, I got. I dreamt that someone gave me a car. I got that car now. Every car I've ever dreamt, I got it. So now I'm waiting for the fulfillment of that dream. And I tell you guys, God is faithful to fulfill his promises. Expect his best. Even when he's not getting yours, expect his best. Because he's not human. He's not a man that he should lie. We're the ones that are fickle and unfaithful. But God, he's, he is dependable. You can, you can take every promise he gives you to the bank. So when your body offends you, Line it back up with the word of God and rebuke that spirit of infirmity and eat and do the things and work and exercise. And whatever you got to do, I got to do more exercise, so I'm talking to me too. But do whatever you can to help facilitate the blessing to get to you quicker and more thoroughly. And maintain your blessing. Okay, I've talked too long. What God has for you, it's for you. Do not let the devil displace you from your blessing or your blessing from you. Do not allow the devil to infiltrate your blessing with his curses. Don't go for it. That's the point. Take authority, drive the enemy out. Keep him out. Spit in his eye. That's right. Do what you got to do to keep him out. Obey God to the best of your ability. And where you fall short, always ask for forgiveness and stay in his mercy. Stay in his good graces. Don't play. God bless you.